In the holy name of Jesus, amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, especially Willis and Lynette and Luann, family, indeed friends, fellow congregation members, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for the sermon today is Janice's confirmation verse, Luke 11, verse 9, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. As you heard, this text was spoken by Jesus in the context of teaching his disciples to pray. And when we pray as Christians, we pray according to faith. We ask the things of God, or from God, that he's already promised to give us. We can ask for anything, to be sure, but we can pray confidently that God answers when we pray according to what he has promised. God loves you to hold him to his word, to ask over and over for what he's already promised and will indeed give to you. He's not like earthly fathers who get a little annoyed when the kids keep asking for the same thing. You get to speak to him as dear children ask their dear father. And he never, not like us, he never grows tired of our asking. He loves to receive your prayers and to give you whatever you ask in his name and according to his word. So again, you heard today Jesus' promise to Janice that was given to her on her confirmation day. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. And as I said, this promise was spoken immediately after Jesus had taught his disciples not just how to pray, but what to pray for, what to ask. His response to them, teach us how to pray, was, when you pray, say, our Father. All prayer, then, begins in Jesus' name and according to his word, and thus it's pleasing to him. And there's really no other prayer in the Bible that so fully expresses what God in Father, Son, and Spirit promises than the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples and of course, he teaches you. Every newborn Christian receives this prayer as their prayer when they're baptized, just as Janice did. It is the Lord's prayer, but of course it's also our prayer because we are the Lord's. This prayer is the daily prayer of the Christian. I think we all learn it by heart, hopefully, and our catechism would have us speak it in the morning and at noon and evening at every meal in times of trouble and when in need and again that's because in the prayer not only does Jesus teach us how to pray but Jesus himself makes great promises and gives us the faith to trust in him think about all the things we ask for what's all the things that every one of us needs everything that Janice needed we ask that his name be kept holy among us, that it, we use his name rightly every time we have need or when we want to praise him or when we give him thanks. We ask that his kingdom, his church, come to us and deliver Jesus to us. We pray that his will be done, namely that we live in the forgiveness of sins purchased and won by Christ and that we inherit the eternal life that he promises us. We pray for daily bread, everything we need for our daily life. We pray that we forgive as God and Christ has forgiven us. We pray that God lead us out of temptation and that he deliver us from every evil to body and soul, even from an evil death. Again, we pray all these things, not just because he tells us to, although that's good, <laughs> but also because these are the things that he promises to give us. So today, we pray. And what do you need from the Lord today? Especially today. 
What does your heart plead for from him? I think we should think about the things that Jesus has promised us and then ask him for those things. So today we know and can't deny the fact that Jesus now, or excuse me, Janice now rests with Jesus. We know that we won't see her again restored and whole again until the resurrection of all flesh on the last day. So what should we pray for? Well, <laughs> he's promised to you too, for all those who love him and die in the faith, that you will have a blessed reunion. And you can hope in that joyful expectation of eternal life with Janus and all who die in him. What else might we pray for today? Again, what has he promised? Well, just as he did when his dear friend Lazarus died, he comforted and he grieved with his friends, Mary and Martha, They're his bro or excuse me, his sisters. So today we can pray for comfort in the midst of things that we still cannot completely understand. We can ask God for wisdom, which he's promised to give us, that we would number our days, we'd remember that he comes. We could pray for courage and faith in the midst of our grief and distress. Pray for comfort and consolation, the comfort and consolation he gives to us in our grief and sorrow. These are the promises of God, and we can pray for them. Not only that, we can hold him to his promises. I think, I didn't know Janice too well, but I know that she looked to God the Father, Son, and Spirit for everything she needed for her faith and for her life. Every time that I visited with her, she had petitions, not always in a formal prayer, but she always asked that the Lord do things for her. She spent her days asking, looking, and waiting for the Lord's answer. She waited and relied on God the Father for all the needs for her life, certainly her material needs, but also for a, a godly and faithful husband, godly and faithful children, good neighbors. Well, I should, shouldn't leave out the rest of the children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, but of course good neighbors, fellow congregation members, opportunities for service and for play, leisure. Her prayers were answered as God caused those apple trees to blossom and bear fruit in the orchard. God provided her with a family to love, friends to help, and a congregation to serve. Janice received all this as a gift, our Lord's answer to her prayers. I'm struck by the uh, story in today's gospel about the friend at midnight. It's one of my favorite stories in the Bible because it's kind of silly. You come to your friend in the middle of the night and you ask for bread, three loaves, I think, right? And what friend wouldn't give their friend three loaves? But the response is very human. Don't you know it's the middle of the night and uh, my kids are already in bed and you woke them up? <laughs> Why did you do that? And yet, because of the need and because of the insistence, what friend would not give the loaves of bread to the other? I was having a conversation before and during the visitation, and it sounds as if Janice wouldn't have complained like the friend at midnight as she provided care and comfort for her fellow members here when they were in need. I heard about one such example. Always ready to serve and to provide without being uh, a grump. <laughs> like that friend at midnight. But that's not all that God did for her and worked through her. The father gave his son Jesus to Janus when she was baptized 93 years ago here in this congregation. She was washed in Jesus' blood and clothed in Jesus' righteousness as now. Each day Janus received the blessings of Jesus' suffering and death for her upon the cross. She lived each day in that blood-bought forgiveness of sins, forgiving others as she was forgiven. And thus Jesus gave her life purpose and meaning as he worked opportunities to love just as he loved her. 
Thus, Jan Jesus is the answer to Janice's prayers for life and salvation. And of course, God the Father and Son gave her his Holy Spirit, too. The same spirit that compelled Arno and Cora to bring little Janice to this font. God the Holy Spirit gathering, Jesus in t or gathering Janice into Jesus' church through these waters. Of course, now I'm thinking of Wally and Willis and getting the names all confused. Janice and Jesus, right? Sound the same. I understand there's a lot of that confusion in the family of the names, huh? In the font, the Spirit blessed Janice with the gift of faith in Jesus. The Spirit shined the bright life of Jesus' life into her heart. And so daily, here in, in our day school, still operating, she sat at Jesus' feet to learn from him. And then weekly, here in the divine service, again with Jesus and her fellow Christians, listening to Jesus and learning from him. And it's there in the home and in the school and here in the congregation that she learned to pray, learned to ask and hold God to his promises. And it's Jesus' spirit that kept Janice in the faith, even through every difficulty and distress, giving her faith and keeping her in that faith of Jesus until finally Janice was called to a blessed rest. Janice asked the Lord for help in prayer, and it was always given to her. She sought the Lord in her distress, and she found him comforting her. Her heart was opened by the Spirit to receive Jesus, and he came to her with everything needed for her faith and life. I think especially today, she could probably tell us a thing about grieving and how to grieve in faith. As she saw her dear parents, brothers and sisters, even a grandson and friends die. In those times, as we do today, she sought the Lord in prayer, and he answered her with the comfort and confidence that are ours, namely in our baptism into Jesus. All the promises he made to her there are your promises too. And that's our source of confidence even today. Now, as I said, she usually asked for a thing or two. They weren't always formal prayers, but the last time I visited with her, they most definitely were. <laughs> she was pleading to the Lord for relief in these last weeks and days. She called on the Lord to take her home into, her loving, into his loving embrace. And as the Lord does, when you ask for what he promises, he gives. He answered her prayers and gave her what she asked in his time and according to his will. Heaven is his promise, and she held him to that promise. And now she rests in Jesus at last. Heaven is her home and awaits the resurrection. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Willis and Lynette, Luann, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, indeed family and all friends, hear Jesus' promise to Janice and his promise to you, too. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit has answered Janice's prayers according to his promises. Thanks be to Jesus in his holy name. Amen. Our Savior Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Let us remember with thanksgiving what God has done through his servant, Janice Myra Lippert. Janice was given life by her creator and was born on April 25th, 1928, the daughter of parents Arno and Cora Stolper. She received the gift of holy baptism and became a child of God on May 13th, 1928. On May 6, 1941, she publicly confessed her faith and was confirmed. She re regularly received the gracious gift of the Lord's life-giving body and blood in the Holy Supper. On November 23, 1950, she received the gift of a beloved companion in her husband Willis. She was blessed with the gift of daughters, Lynette and Luann. 
God blessed Janice's life with many special people as she served God in her vocations at home, in church, in work, and in the community. Finally, on September 2nd, 2021, God blessed Janice with a holy death and took her home to rest in the arms of Jesus to await the resurrection of the dead. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give thanks to God our Father through Jesus Christ our Lord for our sister Janice.